Yeah, so welcome from my side. I was introduced quite well. So I want to talk about what three-dimensional printing actually means for manufacturing and for physical product development. So if we actually look at physical product development today, we pretty much have the picture actually on this slide. So we have iPhone 3G, Apple goes back, they develop for two, three years, then they come up with iPhone 4, then they come up with iPhone 5, and so on and so on. So if we actually compare this to what is happening in the digital world with digital product, we have a very different picture. We just have Facebook. There's no versions, no nothing. They just continuously improve their product and directly ship it to you. And they're actually extremely successful with it. So big question is, why are the manufacturers not doing it as well? And simple answer is production technology. So what we use today is called mass manufacturing. And it's actually all the things around us. And what these technologies have, they actually have economies of scale. And what the economies of scale means is the more you do, the cheaper it gets. So basically, you need to make a huge amount of the same standard product and sell, try to sell it to a very large market. And that's going to work. Problem is, customers are actually not looking for that anymore. Customers are actually looking for what the digital guys are good at. So customers basically look for customized products like this fitness app I can tailor to my fitness level. They look for niche products like this kind of Star Wars themed alarm clock app or whatever, and they look for new products fast. So if we want to do this in manufacturing, we need to be able to produce very small amounts of the same parts, like Nikki said, but until now we couldn't really do that because we have mass manu manufacturing and we need to make a huge amount of the same stuff. But now it's changing. We're introducing new technologies like 3D printing where we actually can produce parts directly from digital files and the very big difference to what we're doing today is that the cost is different. We don't have any economies of scale anymore. Basically, it's like the copy machine in your office. If you do like one or 100 copies, it doesn't make a difference what the each copy costs. And this basically enables us to produce the small amount of parts that enable us to like really fulfill this market need we already see, these customized products, these niche products, and these ever shorter product life cycles. So now that we have it, it's basically a game changer over the next couple of years. And the big question is, what does it actually mean for manufacturing businesses? What do they need to do? And what I would like to share is like, I would like to share four key messages if you're actually manufacturing what it's going to mean. So the first one is you need to start to iterate to actually come to a better solution. So the time when you put down some requirements and then develop for two, three years are gone. You need to be fast to get the first version and then start to improve on it. Here is an example. It's actually students of ETH that built a completely 3D printed power drill. They developed it in six months and they went through three complete iteration. Already the first one actually worked. Two, okay, wait for it. <laughs> You need to actually test your product in the market. It's not just about going through your iterations, but it's actually going with these iterations to your customer and try to sell it to him immediately. So what we're going to see is like we see better software, we're also going to have better products. It's like what these guys did, they do micro robotic system. Rather than finding a lot of investment and do a couple of 10,000 of them, they actually 3D printed 10 of these systems and started to sell them without any funding or anything. Three. You need to start to make the pro your product customizable. Because if we basically go direct from digital file to your final product, why can we not let the customer adjust it to his specific needs? And we also have an example here. It's like a camera manufacturer. And what they do, they actually develop an interactive model for lens shades. So the customer can actually fit the specific lens shade to his specific camera setup. And four, last but not least, but probably most important, if you're a manufacturer, you actually need to become better. Because what's going to happen is you're going to compete against the entire world. Everybody sitting on a couch that actually can have CAD software can start to develop a product, and then he can upload it to a marketplace like this. He basically only has to design. They're going to do manufacturing. They're going to do worldwide shipping. The only thing that you as a designer or innovator get is your margin back. You can innovate on a global scale without any budget. So basically, takeaway, 
manufacturing is going to digitize more and more and what it actually means for the manufacturing industry they need to start to learn from the digital guys in order to really keep up with the speed we're going to see of innovation in the next couple of years thanks a lot